Merry Brumis, everyone! To show my appreciation for the immense amount of support you've all given me in 2021, I wanted to do something special for you guys this holiday season. So, welcome to the 12 Days of Brumis, where I'll be posting a Christmas-themed video every single day for 12 days straight, and at the end of the 12 days, I'll be picking four random subscribers to choose whatever they want from the Reddit Brew merch store. All you have to do to enter is be subscribed and comment a Christmas tree emoji in the comments below. I will also be donating all profit I earn from my merch store for the month of December to the food bank to help families in need in my area. But without further ado, let's merrily prance on into the Just Snow Mill story. Christmas in Off-Brand Wonderland Part 1. I loved all the nickname suggestions for Mill, and I'm glad you guys laughed at Off-Brand Hallmark and Off-Brand Wonderland. I actually think I am going to go with Hellmark since I checked and it isn't taken and it's a lot shorter to type out than off-brand wonderland. If I'm going to be writing most of these tipsy, might as well make it easier on myself. I want to clear up a bit of everyone's confusion in regard to my first post before I get into the most bizarre Christmas in history. Many of you asked me both why I invited her to the wedding and why is she even in my life? Well, my family, brother-in-law's family, and my husband husband's family are all immigrants from the same Eastern European country. It is very common in that country that you know all your in-laws and the family beyond that more for the connections than anything else. Oh, you want to have dinner at a super exclusive restaurant? My son, in-law's sister's husband's cousin's wife, uncle is the manager. I'll ask him to arrange it. It's that kind of thing. And I realize it sounds bizarre and it's not all that common, especially in America, but well, that's how it works. And we deal with it because that is what is expected of us. There are cases where we have cut off people from the family, but those are extreme cases where the person has to do an incredibly heinous thing. Hellmark is an intrusive, boundary stomping, manipulative, nosy, controlling nutbag, and a definite just know. And while she has pissed off and annoyed a lot of people, she has yet to do anything that is enough to have everyone shun her. At this point in time, my husband and I have very low contact with her and basically just have to deal with her for big family events. But this was after a whole treasure trove of things that happened. I decided to post on this sub to vent to people who might have an idea of what I'm dealing with because this woman drives me up the wall and sometimes just thinking about stuff that happened makes me angry. Now, for the story of the first Christmas hosted by Hellmark in her home. Grab your popcorn and booze, cause you are in for one weird fucking ride into her domain, which I will still call Off-Brand Wonderland because that house is terrifying. It is a story that has been retold for years, passed from one family member to the next, and now to you beautiful lovelies. This was a few months after my sister's wedding and I didn't know Hellmark too well yet. I thought she was mostly BEC and definitely over involved and a little too friendly to the point of being saccharine sweet. My sister had begged my parents, my brother, his wife, and myself to accept Hellmark's invitation to Christmas. For us and many other people in our culture, we do the main celebration on Christmas Eve with the presents and big dinner. And on Christmas Day, we just drink and eat and party. Since the invitation was for Christmas Day and not Christmas Eve, we decided to accept mostly because it made my sister happy. So here's some additional background stuff you need to know. In this case, about my brother. A hero to many, but arch enemy to Hellmark. This is a lot of stuff, but I promise you it is all relevant as to why my brother holds such a grudge against Hellmark. He is 11 years older than me, a successful engineer, a giant at six foot six, the snarkiest snark that ever snarked, and way, way too clever for his own good. He has this perpetual wicked smirk that he has had since he was an infant. You know, the kind that looks like he either has or is about to do something wrong and is daring you to find out what. I adore him to pieces. My sister and him always had a very typical brother slash sister relationship 
where they fought so severely, there were times I honestly thought they might murder each other. But my relationship with my brother is very different, mainly because with our age difference and me being the baby of the family, he doted on me throughout my childhood. This is important for later on. A few years before my sister married Bill, brother met Syl, who is actually a kick-ass redhead. He fell harder and faster than Superman ever did, and they married within a few months of meeting each other. She was the first person from a completely different culture to ever marry into our family, but she took to us as much as we took to her. I love Syl. She doesn't have any other siblings, but took on the role of kick-ass older sister easily enough. She is the only woman out of the many women in my brother's life that didn't put up with his shit and made him into a better person. At that point, they had been trying for a baby for two years, only to find out there was a slim to none chance for Syl to ever be able to conceive. They were pretty devastated for a while, but the kick-ass superhero couple that they are, they went about another way of starting a family. They applied to adopt a little boy from Africa. We were all super excited for them, and they were anxiously waiting to hear back from the agency. Okay, now that you're all caught up, onto the story, which I write as I am buzzed on whiskey and cackling as I recount it, not just for you beautiful people, but also for my husband, who says it's one of his favorite Hellmark stories. As is custom, we all brought some food and booze to Hellmark's house. The invitation, which arrived in the mail, specified a dress code of no jeans and green tops. Yes, there was a dress code. Brother and sister-in-law decided to carpool with us because he announced that he would only go if he didn't have to stay sober. We were already drinking on the drive-in because we just knew we would need it. So we drive up to the huge two-door style house and son of a nutcracker. It's like a Christmas nuclear bomb exploded on the one house in an otherwise subtle neighborhood. The house was lined with multicolored lights that flickered in a drug-induced pattern. There was no tree or bush in sight that wasn't covered in lights. Even the fucking mailbox was covered. This was no winter wonderland. No, no. This was a Christmas apocalypse. I took one look, blinked in disbelief, and looked at brother and said, we're going to need more booze. They had a long driveway, and as soon as we pulled in, Bill comes running out of the house. He tells my parents that they have assigned parking. Assigned parking in the driveway. That basically set the tone for the evening. My dad had to maneuver the car to parallel park in a space they marked using Christmas garden gnomes. Yes, you read that right. No, I'm not lying. I almost wish I was. We come inside and apparently we were one of the last to arrive despite being right on time as the house was already full of people. Hellmark greeted us and ushered us into the huge dining room that held no less than 30 people started rapidly introducing us to everyone. It honestly did feel like that scene in My Big Fat Greek Wedding where they are meeting the family and it's, these are their children, Anita, Diane, and Nick. Nick, 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 and ah, uh, Nikki. There seemed to be two very popular names in that family that everyone used for their kids, including my brother-in-law's brother. They were all wearing red, cause this makes it all festive and shit. Even though I was standing next to my brother, I could literally feel him think, what the fuck did we just walk into? The table was set up like we were at a banquet. There were centerpieces that included candles and pine branches, which might have been nice if it wasn't for the fact that the goddamn giant banquet table had a string of multicolored Christmas lights wrapped vertically around it. I'm pretty sure Hellmark was single-handedly responsible for a Christmas light shortage in that state. To add to it all, we had assigned seats, place cards, and all. Was I sitting next to my fun parents and my adoring brother? No! I was placed between my brother-in-law and his brother, who is as much of an annoying douche as his mother. He walks around and acts like some wannabe mobster, with hair slicked back and gold jewelry, plus an exaggerated Eastern European accent. Fun fact, at my sister and Bill's wedding, I was plastered, which meant tactful 
and polite me was dormant and blunt me that wants to start shit was out and I said to Bill's bro, dude, what's with the accent? We all know you were born and raised in Pennsylvania. Literally no one talks like that. And he told me just to foo and I said it back mocking his accent. He's not a fan of me. Seeing where I was sitting, I took a deep breath and turned to Hellmark, focusing on the still sober part of me to bring up the politeness my parents drilled into me. I asked her if it was possible to switch seats and the expression on her face went to plastered on smile and an oddly shrill yet polite voice came out of her. I took great, great pains to make this seating chart work so it will be perfect. I would really prefer that you go to your assigned seat. I am ashamed to say, my friends, that I was so bewildered and new to this brand of crazy that I was rendered speechless. My beautiful bullet bourbon had failed to increase my charisma and I stood there and stared in what must have been a most amusing look of disbelief. Brother, being the savior and hero of man that he is, stepped into the ring then with a loud and exaggerated gasp. <gasps> what? OP can't sit there. Her and Bill would clash. Look, they are wearing entirely different shades of green. It would look awful. You can't sit a forest green next to hunter green. He did this in such a flamboyant but deadly serious way that Helmark actually looked alarmed and started looking between me and Bill bro as if she was comparing our outfits. The fact that brother not only managed to do this ridiculousness with a straight face, still played into it by nodding her head as if this was a grave situation. Bill and Bill bro started to look pissed off because they knew brother was making fun of their mom. My big bear of a dad laughed loudly and diffused it, just making light of it all and saying I would probably enjoy myself more sitting next to my sister and brother. Hellmark grudgingly agreed and I at least got to enjoy dinner next to my brother. Now, the dinner itself seemed overly formal to the point where it seemed forced. Every course was announced and Hellmark proceeded proceeded to describe every single thing she did to cook the dish. I will grudgingly admit that she is a good cook and the food was damn delicious. The fact that the food was delicious didn't offset how fucking weird it was though that she made all conversations stop to loudly describe the preparation of each dish and waited for us to tell her how good it was. While we ate, Hellmark steered conversation between my family and her family, sharing little tidbits she knew of us. Did you know that OP works with animals? It sounds like so much fun, if not for the smell. Oh, brother, did you know random relative also wants to be an engineer? Maybe he can talk to you about it. Oh, OP's mom, I love your sweater. I think random relative has the exact same one. It was weird and superficial shit like that, and frankly, it made it feel Feel like we were all playing a part in a movie that Hellmark couldn't get funding for. Brother at that point was fairly tipsy and acting silly because he too couldn't comprehend the situation we found ourselves in and started using an overly flamboyant voice, which is even funnier given that his normal voice is like a foghorn level of deep. Why, these dishes are fabulous. And they would be more fabulous if this room had marble floor. And then we can throw them on the floor. Syl and I were laughing into our drinks, but my sister started hissing at my brother to stop and that he was being a rude asshole. Brother's face gets super serious and he looked at sister and said, I'm sorry, I would move away to not bother you, but I'm not allowed to. And of course, Syl and I burst into slightly louder giggles, which interrupted what I am sure was a riveting story Hellmark was in the middle of telling. She CBF'd and looked over to us, her face quickly going into a wide fake smile. Oh, I am so glad you guys are having a good time. Do you want to share what's so amusing? I swear she said it so formally, I felt like I was back in fourth grade being called out for laughing in class. Syl smiled her oh so lovely and charming smile and raised her glass. We are drinking and being merry. She used her glass to point to the cheesy banner over the doorway that said, eat, drink, and be merry. Hellmark's plastered on smile became more strained. Did I mention how happy I am my brother managed to convince this angel of a woman to marry him? Cause seriously, best decision ever. Dessert comes, which happened to be one of my favorite desserts ever. 
sugar. It was this dense, spiced cake that was covered in sugar icing, and the center of it is stuffed with plum jam. Bless my lovely mother for having insisted on making it for this dinner as a bribe to get us to come. I will endure hellfire and white walkers for this cake. Instead of getting right into dessert, Mill chooses this moment to stand up and lecture. She called it making a toast, but I have never in my life heard a toast that went on for as long as this speech did. It was what I am sure she thought was a heartfelt, emotional speech about how her family growing and having all these new people and how wonderful it was to share with all of us. What the rest of us heard was her telling us that she is now the matriarch of the family and we are all going to come and join her for things whenever she wants us to and that her family is closest to ours now. Seriously, a whole self-delusional speech that left my mother and I bewildered, my brother rolling his eyes, my sister looking uneasy, and still downing both mine and my brother's whiskey. Alcohol was a real hero that night, because I'm pretty sure none of us could have gotten through that dinner if it wasn't for the mind-numbing effect of it. Next, like a fucking stage director, Hellmark announced we would be moving into the living room and for us to find our seats. I'll save that for part two, cause it's a doozy and this is already pretty freaking long. Jesus Mary and the Wee Donkey. By the way, that's great googly moogly in Christmas language. <laughs> You know, to be fair, I am a slight perfectionist and type A personality in the sense that I like things to be organized and I do not half-ass anything I do, especially when it comes to hosting. But one thing I've learned that Mill clearly hasn't is that you can decorate and control your own territory as much as you want, but what you can't do is control other people because ultimately everyone's just going to do what they want anyways and you never want to make people uncomfortable by trying to force them to do things that they don't want to. You need to appropriately choose the hills you're willing to die on and those hills should not be assigned seating and assigned parking in the goddamn driveway. Plain and simple. The thing with people like Mill though is that they are so out of touch with reality and live in their own fantasy worlds that nothing else matters except for them and their plans. That's the difference between a logical type A personality and a narcissistic type A personality. But regardless, there's no doubt that Mill is delusional and I can't wait to see what wildly inappropriate gifts they all got from her. But but anyways, that is all for me today. I will see you all tomorrow for part two of Christmas in off-brand Wonderland and day five of Brumis. Bye!